first competency, but it's the one that we're going to cover today. If you would like to follow along with the PowerPoint, if you have your own laptop or tablet here, you can find this by going to course content on Blackboard, materials for public speaking, and then the PowerPoint is right here. Um, I also am recording this lecture, so if you, I think I am, yes, I still am, I am recording the lecture, so if you would like to follow, uh, or I'm sorry, if you would like to go back and listen to it again, if that's helpful to you, you are welcome to do that. So competency two, sorry, hold on here. Competency two is all about the introduction of the speech. This is arguably one of the biggest parts of the speech itself because this is where you grab the attention of your audience. If you don't have the attention of your audience, then moving forward, you're not going to get through to them because you haven't done the work to get the attention of the audience and hold them through the remainder of your speech. So we're going to start with a look at um, an example speech. This is a student speech. It is not from our any of the classes that I have taught. It's from what's called the Belmont Speech Lab, and it's a series of different speeches that are housed on YouTube. And so if there are, um, if you find yourself with some time and you'd like to look at other examples, that's a good place to look. Keep in mind that their requirements aren't quite the same as mine but we do use those as um, examples for this class. So I'm just going to show you the introduction. We will end up watching this speech in its entirety, but not today. We'll see if the sound works here. Let me get the volume up and then I'll start it over. Okay, so that was the whole introduction. So usually you're looking at 45 seconds-ish for the introduction of your speech. So now we're going to jump into exactly what I'm looking for in the introduction. You are welcome um, to take notes however works for you. Sometimes students find it best to just write on this handout the notes that are needed, but if you need more room than that, whatever works for you. But this is information that you're gonna need for your homework for Tuesday, which is writing a rough draft of your introduction. So the first thing that I want to hear from you when you give your speech is what we call the attention gaining material. So this is how you grab the attention of your audience. Now, many of you for your diagnostic speech, because I asked you to, said something like, hi, my name is Sarah, I'm majoring in whatever, I chose this topic because of XYZ. 
Now, I wanted to know that information because I don't know all of you very well yet, and I wanted to make sure that I understood why you chose the topic, what your major is, those types of things. When it comes time for your graded presentation, you do not start with an introduction of yourself. By early October, I will know who each of you is, and so there will be no need to introduce yourself to the class. You also don't want to start by stating your topic. So today I'm going to be talking about horses, or whatever the case may be. You're going to start with the attention gaining material. So there are a few different options that you have for a way to start. The first way is with, with what we call a startling statistic. And you could also use an interesting or thought-provoking statistic. It doesn't necessarily need to be startling like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. Maybe not quite like that. But something interesting that your audience might say, hmm, I did not realize that. So an example of that might be something like, According to the Center for Disease Control, in the United States, 26.6 million adults have heart disease. This would be about 12% of adults or three people in this room. So that's a statistic that might make people think, hmm, that's interesting. I'd like to hear more. You do need to make sure that your statistic is accurate and relevant to what you're talking about. So if I gave you that statistic about heart disease, you would assume that my speech is going to have something to do with heart disease or healthy eating or something along those lines. So you don't wanna do a startling statistic, like here's some information about heart disease and then jump into talking about like um, different majors in college. So not quite sure how those would be linked together. So you need to make sure that when you have that statistic that it's relevant to what the rest of your speech is going to be about. You do need to make sure that it is the most up-to-date information and that you are citing those sources. So you'll notice that I said, um, according to the Center for Disease Control. So that's where that information can be found. Another way that students often start their speeches is with a rhetorical question. This works fine. I would say that this is probably one of my least favorite ways that students start speeches. Um, I happen to like the statistic and the quote the best, but these are other options. I won't dock you points if you choose to do one of these others, but the rhetorical questions get a little old to me. So did you know those types of things? Um, so an example of a rhetorical question might be something like, setting goals is easy, but achieving them isn't. How are you sabotaging yourself? an uplifting one. So in that case, you might go into talking about how you are setting goals in college and moving forward and how you are maybe time management, those types of things. So setting goals. If you choose to ask a question, please make sure it is rhetorical. So you don't want to set yourself up for a raise of hands or looking for people to actually respond to you. In some speaking situations, that is appropriate. But in this class, I'm looking for a very specific time frame. And if you are um, expecting people to respond and they don't, or people are talking to you and you're not prepared for that, it can really mess up the rest of your speech as far as time. And it might throw you off your game a little bit when it comes to that. So make sure that the question is actually rhetorical. The other thing that can happen is if you ask for a raise for people to raise their hand and nobody raises their hand, it might not fit very well into the rest of your speech. So make sure that it is actually a rhetorical question. Another way that you can start your speech is with a quote. So this would be any um, sort of quote that has to do with the speech topic itself. So again, you need to make sure that it is relevant to the topic that you chose. So an example might be something like, eloquent speech is not from lip to ear, but rather from heart to heart. This quote spoken by William Jennings Bryan, and then I would go on to discuss how that relates to the topic that we're talking about today. If you choose to start with a quote, always start with the quote itself. 
don't start out saying something like, this is a quote, just say it. And then you'll refer back to this quote from whoever, blah, blah, blah. Make sure that you choose a quote that enhances your speech and is clearly connected to the topic that you chose. The fourth way that you could grab the attention of your audience is to tell a story. As human beings, we love a good story. That's what we thrive off of, and that can be a really good way to gain the attention of your audience. So one great way to do this if you choose to tell a story is to give the story up to like the climax and then do your speech. And then at the very end of your speech, you can have the end of your story, the conclusion of your story as the clincher for the speech. So you don't wanna necessarily tell the entire story at the very beginning of your speech. Keep in mind that this is only a five minute speech and your introduction is only 45 seconds. So you can't tell an elaborate story. It would have to be a very simple um, story of some kind that you tell at the beginning. The final way that I have um, up here to grab the attention of your audience is a joke. Now, I sometimes don't include joke on here because it can be really difficult to start your speech with a joke. As you can tell, 10 a.m. is early for many of you. So there are some snoozy folks in this classroom. So your joke might fall flat, right, given the audience. Also, if you think you are funny, try your joke out on a few people to ensure that you actually are funny before you give the joke in front of the class. It can be very daunting to begin with a joke that you think is really funny and you've got this great joke and then nobody laughs or even cracks a smile. So it happens to me all the time up here, but I'm old and I'm used to it. So you just need to be prepared that the joke needs to be funny. Make sure you're funny if you choose to use a joke. It needs to be um, appropriate for college level classroom. This is a formal type of speaking situations, so we're not going for raunchy jokes here, and it does need to be related to your topic. So you don't wanna be completely off with your joke and then try to bring it back to the subject. So it needs to be somehow related. I'm not saying don't use a joke, just test it out on a few people first to make sure that it works. And you'll have plenty of practice and hopefully your classmates will give honest feedback to you. If I were doing this, I would tell the joke to my kids because they're brutally honest with me. <laughs> they don't think I'm funny at all, ever. Any questions about the attention gaining material? Yes. So for the quote, when you like introduce someone who said the quote, mm -hmm. Um, not completely in the introduction, but you should make sure that they actually do know something mm -hmm. about the topic that you're discussing. But I, this speech is too short to go into that too in depth, but um, we're gonna talk more about credible sources when we get into competency three, I believe. So you wouldn't wanna just draw a quote from a random person because that wouldn't be a reliable source so that would fall into that reliable but you don't necessarily need to discuss that in the speech itself other questions about the attention gaining material so the introduction is very formulaic so this is the first thing that needs to happen within the introduction remember you are not introducing yourself or your topic you'll start with this attention gaining material. You all started with an introduction and your topic because that's what I asked you to do. But for the graded portion, I'm gonna ask you to switch gears a little bit. So the next part of your introduction is your thesis statement. Now we'll talk at the end, but oftentimes these different components will blur together, especially after the attention gaining material. 
So just bear with me a bit as we go through this. So your thesis statement, as many of you know, is how you announce the topic and the purpose of your speech. So this should be pretty obvious within the first couple of sentences. And this is just where I can, I know what you are planning to discuss within your speech. It should not be a mystery what your speech is about. If you were giving a persuasive speech, this is where we would find out which side of the argument you are trying to convince your audience of. Again, this is informative, so you're basically just telling us what you're going to be talking about within the speech. So I have an example up here. There are, are a few examples. There are a number of sociological and developmental reasons why young people find gangs interesting. So my assumption would be, if you said that within your introduction, that your speech is going to have something to do with gangs and gang activity. The second one, with their scope, history, and influence, comic books are an interesting component of American popular culture. So if I heard that in your introduction, what would I assume that your speech is going to be about? Comic books, right? If I heard that and then you started talking about dog mushing, I would be very confused. <laughs> the third one, the three simple things travelers can do to avoid getting lost or to carry maps, plan out the route beforehand, and ask directions from knowledgeable sources. What is the speech going to be about? Something to do with traveling um, and not getting lost while traveling, I would assume. So going along with the thesis statement is often your preview of points. So your introduction is a time for you to tell me what you plan to cover in the speech. So many of you on the notes that I gave back to you, it says something like, what are the two to four main points you plan to cover? So for a speech of this length, for a five minute speech, students usually have three topics that they cover. How many of you from your high school writing experience remember the five paragraph essay? Oh man, yes, I hope so, because I'm sure it was drilled into your brains over and over again. So with the five paragraph essay, you have an introduction, three main points, and a conclusion, correct? That's basically what you're doing in speech format. So you have your introduction, where you introduce what your two to four main points will be, and then you have those in the body of your speech, and then you'll have a conclusion at the end. If you have more than four points, it's going to feel like you're listing things. It's going to get really choppy, so you're going to want to think about how you could combine some of those ideas or cut back a little bit. What is different about speaking than writing the five paragraph essay is that you are very blunt. When you are listening to things, it's often harder to digest that information than when you are reading something because you can't go back and reread. So in the introduction, you need to be very explicit about these are the things that I will be covering in my speech. So you lay it out there pretty plain. So this example was the same as from the thesis, but it says with their scope, history, and influence, comic books are an interesting component of American popular culture. That tells me then in the body of your speech, you're going to go over the scope, the history, and the influence. So those are the three things that you should be elaborating upon in the body of your speech. It seems repetitive when you're writing it and when you're speaking, but as a listener, we need that. So our attention spans are very short as listeners and we need to hear, what are you gonna tell us? And then you tell us, and then in the conclusion, you say, hey, this is what I just told you in this five minute speech. So again, it'll feel repetitive, especially if you're taking a writing class right now, this will feel different than what your writing teacher is telling you, but your audience needs that repetitiveness. Okay, so the second example here for the preview, to see how we can end our dependence on fossil fuels, we will first take a look at why we as a society are so dependent upon fossil fuels. Secondly, find out what continues to cause this dependence. And finally, see how ethanol as a fuel supplement will help end this dependence and make the world a better place for all of us. This is a persuasive 
topic, if you didn't catch that, this is persuasive, but it's a really good example of how to set up um, your different points within your introduction. Oftentimes, your thesis and your preview of points will be one sentence. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to have separate sentences for each of these components. They just need to be present within the introduction. Questions about the preview of points? Yeah, both of these. Yep. Yeah, both of these examples include both the thesis and the preview of points. That's pretty typical in the introduction, especially with a speech as short as these. I know some of you are saying, five minutes, that's not a short speech, that's forever. But in the scheme of speech, giving a five minute speech is quite short. So, a lot of this will be combined in order to shorten that introduction down. Because you don't want to spend a lot of time on the introduction. The bulk of your speech is spent on elaborating those points. Other questions about the preview? Okay. So the next thing that needs to be included within your introduction is a relevance to the audience. So you looked at audience analysis for your homework for this week, and this is basically why your audience should be listening to this speech. Why is it important for this class to know about the topic that you chose? For some of you, this is going to be much easier than for others. So this could be um, if your topic has something to do with university life or campus life or something to do with young adults, that would be how you bring relevance to your topic. Some of you are, need to, are going to need to broaden out a little bit. So if it doesn't quite fit with our UAA community, does it have something to do with us be all living in Anchorage or living in Alaska? Can you bring relevancy in that way? Or do you need to go bigger, the United States, or even bigger citizens of this world? Okay, so I'd like you to start as small as possible and then work your way out. So as an example, in 2016, 203,413 Alaskans purchased resident fishing licenses. That's about 27% of our population which means that one out of four people in Alaska did some kind of fishing in Alaska. Many Alaskans enjoy ice fishing. So the relevancy for this is looking at Alaskans, okay, resident Alaskans. So we all are living here currently. You may not all be Alaska residents, but we're all living in Alaska at this moment. So that's how I built the relevancy. Note that this relevancy could also serve as your attention gaining because it's a statistic as well. So again, those can be combined together. So I want you to be thinking to yourself, how can I build the relevancy with my audience? And could you put that as your attention gaining statement as well? Oftentimes those can fit together. Questions about relevancy? What's your topic again? Okay. About. Okay, so I. Uh, um, maybe something about how many people have been influenced or how many people is a show oh, yes tv yes but on television yeah. yeah so maybe how many americans tune in have watched something along those lines yeah so you might have to step back a little bit to see how that relevancy comes in i can help you if you're struggling with that 
I'm not hip to all things, but I know how to use the Google machine and I can figure it out. Other questions about relevancy? The other thing that can be fun to do for relevancy is to take a poll of our class so you can make it as specific as possible. So for example, if you were doing a speech on, I don't know, Layla, I'm gonna pick on you, about hockey, something to do with hockey, you could do a poll within our class about how many people have played hockey, are interested in learning about hockey, have heard the new rules, whatever the case may be. So you can come up with your own sort of um, poll or um, survey that you would like to take with the class, and then you can use that within your speech. So out of the 25 people in our class, over half of us have done this, that, or the other. Man, that's like the best relevancy you could ask for because that's very specific to the people right here. Now that won't work for all of your topics, but it is one way that you can build that relevancy. It could also be your attention gaining statement. You are welcome to do a raise of hands at any point between now and when speeches start. So if you really wanna know like how many people have have a dog or whatever you're wanting to know, I can give you the floor for a couple minutes at the beginning of the class to do that, okay? All right, the final thing in your introduction is a transition. So you have to give a verbal cue to the audience that you are moving out of the introduction and moving into the body of your speech. This is not difficult, but it needs to be there. So something like, First, to begin, before I tell you this, I'm going to tell you that. Something along those lines. So you need some sort of transition so your audience can say, okay, I get it. We're moving out of the introduction and into the body of the speech. Now that you know these things, as you listen to speeches, you'll hear these cues for the audience. We need them because our brains you know, have those short attention spans. We need those cues to help us. So here's an example of an introduction. I'll read through it once, and then I would like you to find someone near you, one or two people that are sitting near you, and I want you to pick apart the different pieces of the introduction. So all of the components that we just went over are in this introduction. Some of them are combined together. According to the Alaska Department of Fish and Game website, in 2016, 203,413 Alaskans purchased resident fishing licenses. That means that about 27% of our population or one out of four people in Alaska bought a fishing license. The number of non-resident fishing, the number of non-resident licenses is even higher. So it is likely that over 25% of our class has been fishing in Alaska. Ice fishing is a winter hobby for many in Anchorage because of the many fishing spots, ease of finding appropriate gear, and the wide range of fish that can be got, that can be caught. To begin, here is a map of the many lakes available for ice fishing in Anchorage. Okay, so with someone near you, I want you to find each of those components from the introduction. So you've got your attention gaining, your thesis, your preview of points, relevancy, and your transition. So five parts. You do not need to write them down. You can just talk about it and then we'll come back together as a whole class. Questions about what I want you to be doing right now? Okay, go ahead. Uh, 
partner or partners decide was the attention gaining material for this example yeah go ahead yeah so this yeah this startling statistic it doesn't have to be startling just that attention grabbing statistic here so that first bit the first couple of sentences maybe even the first three sentences giving those stats so that's the attention grabbing Okay, everybody have something similar to that. Good. All right. What about thesis statement? Go ahead. Ice fishing is a winter hobby for many in Anchorage because it's hyperbolic. Yeah, that sentence that started with ice fishing is a winter hobby. I expect based on that sentence that the rest of the speech will be not just about fishing in general but more specifically ice fishing in the Anchorage area. Okay. Everybody good on that? Okay. Preview of points. Go ahead. Yep. So three different topics. When you do your preview of points, it needs to be the same order as the speech itself. So whatever you list first in that preview, that'll be the first thing you talk about, second, second, third, the third. Remember that you're looking for two to four main points for this speech. So if you have more than that, you need to figure out how to condense it down. Usually students have three. What's the relevancy? 25% of our class, Emma? Yeah. yeah. It's all over in this, okay? We're talking about non-residents, residents, people in this class. And if 
I were being even better about the relevancy, I would have taken a poll and said, how many of you have ice fished? Before I give my speech, how many of you have ice fished? And then I would include that in the introduction as well. Okay, so we can't like take the poll like while we're doing so. I don't want you to give the poll because I, what if no one has been ice fishing and that's your relevancy and that's what you're building your relevancy upon? Well. Wait, so we're gonna, so we're gonna like, if we want to, we can take a poll and then take, and then go into our. Yeah, so you would do the poll next week during class and I would let you do that and then you would work that into okay. your speech before the beginning of October. So you would know that 10 people in this class have been ice fishing in Anchorage or whatever the case may be. That is better for you in the long run, especially as we are beginners with the speech giving process because then you can have that factoid and use it in your speech appropriately and they're not leaving anything up for chance. As you become more confident in your speaking abilities, that might be something you do later on down the road. But for this, I want you to know for sure how the class will react. Um, okay, and finally, the transition. To begin, right, that final sentence. And you'll notice that it says it's the map of the lakes available, and that's the first main point that I talked about in the preview. So your introductions will for sure start with an attention gaining, and they will end with the transition. The other bits might get mixed up within there, but I should hear that attention gaining, how you're going to grab the attention of the audience, and then the transition. You're working on 45 seconds-ish for the introduction. All right, so we're gonna watch that example again. And I want you to be listening for these different components. What do all of these famous celebrities have in common? Perhaps the same net worth, maybe the same homesick, or maybe anything at all. And in fact, there is. There's one thing they all share, and it's the fact that they are first born. This meaning that out of the children that their parents have all sprung, they are the oldest ones. Everyone can relate to this. Maybe you're a firstborn, perhaps you're a new child like myself, or maybe you're the baby of the family who gets picked on a little bit, but everyone has these similarities and characteristics that apply within our lives as well as others. My family, for example, I have an older sister, a brother who's with me as a middle child, and my younger sister, which is the last born. All of us understand this, and all of us have certain characteristics that apply both now and later on in life. In a few moments, let me enlighten you to something known as the birth order effect, focusing on two aspects. First, the history and research of the birth order effect, and second, many of the characteristics and adult life qualities that stem from being a firstborn or only child, middle child, and even a youngest born. But first, let's preview into the history and research. Okay, so what did you hear as the attention gaining material? Yeah, so there was the picture of the celebrities, that rhetorical question, what do these people all have in common? What is this speech going to be about? What is the thesis? Yeah, so something about birth order, right? Like where you are born within your family impacts how you interact with each other and the world. Uh, relevancy. Go ahead, Emma. We'll talk about visual aids. So again, none of these exude perfection. I will throw that caveat up there that these are not perfect speeches. They're just examples for you to look at. So you can, and we'll talk more about what can be good and bad about each of these. But for the relevancy, he talked about where you are born within your family. Some of us are firstborn, only children, middle youngest children. So that would be the relevancy. If you wanted to make that even stronger, you might find out who in the class is a firstborn only child and include that information as well. For these speeches, they are given in front of a random audience, so that wouldn't work for them to be able to figure that all out before the speech. You have the advantage of this is your audience. These are the students who will be here 
for your speech day. So you will know them better by the time you give your speech. Um, preview of points. I don't remember exactly what they were either, but did you see them up on the screen there? So he was very specific about what he was going to cover within the speech. And then that transition, did you hear that? To begin the history, and then he went through like that. Yeah, or first, I can't remember exactly what he said. So one thing that he did do on here is that he built credibility with himself by bringing up his own experiences within his family. That is a strategy. We are not going to use that strategy in this class. So you had your opportunity in the diagnostic speech to let me know why you chose the topic that you did. We're not going to do that for your formal speech. So that bit of information is going to be left out. So please do not bring that attention to yourself within the introduction of your speech. Did you have a question? Um, when he was talking about his family, was that making it personal? Yeah, so, and that is a strategy that some people use, um, that some instructors will ask is to bring that, it's um, how you can bring um, yourself into the speech and make yourself more relatable. I don't want you to do that for our class, for our purposes. And if you watch these Belmont Speech Lab speeches, they all do that. So it must be part of their requirement to include that reference to self. I'm going to ask that you don't include that, though, for your own speeches. Okay. Um, as far as the visual aid with all the writing, we'll talk more about this next week. but. That is not necessarily the best way to do the visual aids. It's a lot of writing. Questions about introductions. Yes. Well, the visual aid had a lot of writing on it. We'll dive more in depth in visual aids next week, but um, Emma had asked, so I just wanted to come back to that. Questions about the introduction, those different components of the introduction. Are you feeling confident that you can do this? Okay, because your assignment for Tuesday, you have a homework assignment for reading, but you do also have um, your rough draft for your introduction due. So if you have your syllabus with you, you'll notice that for week three, you need to read chapter nine and that reading assignment, again, is due before you walk through the door on Tuesday. And then you need to bring a rough draft of your introduction to class with you. So for this, it can be handwritten, if you would like, or it can be on your phone, your tablet, laptop, whatever. It is helpful to have the different pieces labeled or highlighted. If you want to do some like color coding, you could do it that way just to make sure that you have all the different pieces and parts of your introduction. I am going to ask you to have that with you when you come to class. I'll be coming around to check that you have it. It's a five point completion grade. But then you will have an opportunity to work with someone else in the class to go over the introduction and do um, some peer review with that. So, it won't break your grade if you don't have it here, but it will set you a step behind. So we're going to have these steps leading up to the speech where I ask you to have different things done. So it's important for you to go through it back. Hallie? So let's do um, Tuesday the 10th. Yeah. So you've got two things. Questions? Great. It says. We only want the competency one, right? Yeah. Well, technically we went through competency two. Oh, wait. So next week we'll go through. I never know how fast we're going to do so it's a little bit. But the homework assignments are correct. Other questions? You may have noticed.
notice on the rubric that there is a grading thing at the bottom? It's weird. It makes sense in my brain, and it will make sense by the time we present. Um, and I will go over this again at the end. But you can earn a grade 1 through 5 for each of the competencies. If you come up in front of the class and you say, I hate speaking, you will earn a 1 for each of them. That is a D. It's a D. So as long as you do something in front of the classroom, um, you will earn a 60%. I know you're all going to do more than that because you did for your diagnostics. So you can, I know you can do better than that. So you've got room to grow and improve. So a one is you try, it's lacking a lot. A five is I have no more advice to give you. You have perfected that skill. It's hard to earn a five. So threes, fours, fives is probably what most of you will be aiming for for these competencies. That'll get you in the high B A range for the speakers. You can still go to A, B, and so far. Now I'm pretty confident that you could all earn fives for the introduction if you follow that formula that I just gave you. Right? Usually students do really well. This is not the right one. Usually students do really well on 